A reading from Luke's Gospel, the 21st chapter, verses 25 through 36. Listen to God's word. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place. Stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves And know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. (coughs) Everywhere you look, people are getting ready. The decorations are being pulled out of closets and attics. Trees are going up. Wreaths are being hung. Christmas music fills the air. There are presents to buy, work to do, cooking, cleaning, setting up. As the song says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And people are getting ready. And that's a good thing, of course, because the season of Advent, which begins today, well, it is all about getting ready. But getting ready for what? Our text today suggests that um, there may be more to Advent than meets the eye or our expectations. Because here, here Advent opens not with with words of, of wonder as we might expect, but instead with words of warning. Be on guard, Jesus says. So that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. Be alert at all times. I kind of wish it did not start like that. But there it is, right there in the text. Right when we are eager to turn toward the joy of Christmas. 
The Bible throws a shadow across our holiday cheer. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, Jesus goes on. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. Dark words. Dark words of judgment as we await the coming of God. Dark and gloomy. That's probably not the way we would have written this script. Where's the joy in this? Where is the peace and and the goodwill that we are expecting? I was thinking about this as I was driving through Kernersville at night recently, looking at the decorations that we are uh, that are springing up all along the streets and in the store windows. And a question came to my mind, a question about those nameless, faceless people who, who pick the lectionary texts every Sunday, who, who give us texts like these. And my question was this. Couldn't you have picked something a a little bit lighter? Couldn't you have picked something a little bit lighter for the first Sunday of Advent? But I think that there is a reason they did not. There's a reason for this. There's a reason that here on this first Sunday of Advent we get a text like this. You see, this is a busy season, a season where we often find ourselves in a hurry, in a rush, and so we have a tendency to to rush right past parts of the gospel story. To rush right past the part about, about the judgment of God. And rush too quickly to the parts about God's mercy or God's love. Or God's grace. So each year, Advent reminds us that we are to be just as ready for the second coming of Christ with its images, yes, of chaos and terror and judgment, as we are for the first coming with its images of the tiny baby and shepherds and the attendant angel choir. Advent presents us with a challenge, calling us to to wake up to the reality of, of the world we live in, to wake up to the reality of our lives. It reminds us that unless we acknowledge the darkness that is there, the light will not burn so brightly in our hearts. To try and understand Advent, try try looking at it from the perspective of one of Israel's greatest prophets, the prophet Jeremiah. He lived in in a time of chaos, judgment, and terror. He witnessed the undoing of the monarchy in Judea, the destruction of Jerusalem, and the ensuing Babylonian captivity. For three generations, the Hebrews would languish in exile. And their dream of a promised land and a covenant with God would lie in ruins. Only the prophets could speak with authority at that time. And they chose to speak of the coming day of the Lord. On that day, they would thunder, when God comes, there will be great and terrible things. You see, the role of the prophets was to call the people to account before God for their failings. Israel had wandered far from God. And its exile came as no surprise to Jeremiah. But note this, in the middle 
of all of this. Jeremiah also had something else to say. He was given another word from God, and that word reminded the people that no matter how bad things got, God would not abandon them. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up and he shall execute justice in the land. The only thing the people who walked in darkness could do was throw themselves on the mercy of God and get ready for the day of the Lord. Get ready for his coming. And so it is with us as well. As Advent opens, we too find ourselves waiting in hope for the day of the Lord. And that day is easily forgotten in today's world where where success at any cost seems to matter far more than integrity. Where we are so convinced that, that we are right and they, whoever they are, are wrong. In this world where things of the world seem to matter far more than the things of God. But biblical faith has no room for such petty games. The prophets were serious when they called the people to account. They warned that God's judgment cannot be laughed away or ignored. Their message for this and every Advent season is simple. If we have wandered from the path of God, it is time for us to return to that path. Jesus is coming, and the time is short, so get ready. Get ready. And for them, it was a matter of life and of death. And that makes me wonder if it is the same for us today. Too often, I think we lack an awareness of God's power and God's judgment. Too often we try to turn God into a a being that, that we can easily control. An easy to understand God who is best recognized in the cherub like face of the baby Jesus. Too often our religion is so predictable and self assured that. We assume that the prophets and Jesus were, well, they were speaking about other people when they preached their words of warning. Surely they can't be speaking to me. They can't be speaking to us. But what if their words are meant for us as well? Advent gives us the chance each year to come clean, to pause and face the music, to see ourselves and our world the way God sees them. Advent is a time of of balance between the sadness of the mess we live in and the hope of the world we desire to live in. 
without the darkness, without fear of the night, without a God who is beyond us in power and might, we will only know a false optimism that disappoints in the end. What we need in our time, as the Israelites needed in theirs, is deep hope. The deep hope that is found only at the intersection of our fear and God's mercy. Our faith should be strengthened, especially in this season of Advent, by a healthy realization that we serve a powerful and awesome God who demands our allegiance and is not willing to accept anything else. And perhaps that causes us to be a little afraid. But perhaps that is okay. Perhaps that is how we should approach God, especially in Advent. When Isaiah the prophet saw a vision of God in the temple, he was driven to his knees and he cried out, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. That is how we should approach the reality of our attempts to live as God intends. We are here standing on the threshold of the coming of God Almighty, so maybe we should feel some fear. Fear for ourselves because of what we have done and what we have left undone. Fear for our world, which seems so far beyond redemption. Few of us, myself included, genuinely own up to our failures before God. Few of us, myself included, want a God that has the power to deal with us as we deserve. And yet, that is the word we receive as we begin Advent. If we realized this, as we await the coming day of the Lord, perhaps we would start getting ready. Perhaps we would rise up and do what we could to respond to the pain and need in the world today. We might be led to to reach out and touch the lives of those whose lives need our touch. As a community of faith, as people who walk in darkness, who have seen a great light, it is up to us to help that light shine in the darkness of the world. And we have no choice but to respond. So yes. Yes. Advent opens with words of warning and not words of wonder. But note this. The reason the prophets of this season wanted us to face the judgment and power of God is precisely to find there the hope we need. It is the connection of the manger 
and the cross. The hope found there sustains us. In the face of, of all the problems that, that threaten to overwhelm us, that threaten to undo us. Jeremiah and Jesus and the others warned us about the darkness. But they did not leave us there. Instead, they point the way toward the light. They knew that nothing could overcome the light of God, not exile, not disease or despair, not even death itself. The shadow that falls across our Advent path allows the light of Christ, the light of Christmas, to shine in our world and in our hearts all the more when it comes. And it helps us to remember to stand up, stand up and, and raise our heads for our redemption draws near. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.